Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to update to the latest version of RetroArch on your PC. Using this method, we won't lose any of your current configuration files, any of the things you normally have inside your RetroArch folder. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So at the moment of recording this video, I am currently on RetroArch version 1.9.0. Now this is a really outdated build at the moment. We are a couple of versions ahead of this. So today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to update it and we will keep everything in touch as is on our actual RetroArch. We won't be affecting cores. We won't be affecting playlists or configuration files or anything else. So the first thing we need to do is head over to our browser and we're going to be coming to the RetroArch website. Links is always in the description down below. Once we're here, we're going to be coming to the download section right here. I'm going to be clicking on download. And here we're going to have all of the different versions of RetroArch that we can download. For today's video, I'm only going to be focusing on the stable builds of RetroArch, not the nightly builds. Although if you would like to download the nightly builds, it is basically the same. I'm going to be showing you how to do this. For today's video, I'm using Windows 10 and I would assume most of you are using at least Windows 7 or Windows 10. What I'm going to be doing is downloading the latest stable 64-bit build, and that's what we're going to be downloading here. You can also feel free to download the automatically selected version here at the very top, or you can feel free to download the latest nightly as mentioned. For me, I'm just going to be using the latest stable build here for the 64-bit version. As for the moment, I currently think I'm using Windows 32-bit, which is not the case. So I'm going to be clicking download here, and I'm just going to be letting this download. So this file is in a .7-zip file, so we are going to be needing to extract this. So you will be needing WinRAR or 7-zip to extract this file. If you don't already have this on your PC, I'll be leaving links in the description down below. Feel free to get either of those so we can actually extract this. Once your download is done, I'm going to be moving it to a location where you can find it easily. I currently have it on my desktop right here. What we're going to be doing is right-clicking. I'm going to be hovering over 7-zip as I'm currently using that. And I'm simply going to be extracting the files, selecting the location and clicking OK. And just like that, I have extracted the latest build of RetroArch. If we double click to open this up, we can click in here and we can see all of the RetroArch assets inside here. And this is exactly what we're going to be pasting into our new RetroArch folder so we can update and replace everything there. So the next thing we need to do is find our current RetroArch install folder. To do this, we're going to be clicking on our search bar on the bottom left and we're going to be searching for RetroArch. And here when we search this open, we should see the RetroArch app, but we should also see underneath the app section here, the RetroArch data folder. And that's where we're going to be going to. If we select this open, we will see our current RetroArch install build. And what we're going to be doing is clicking to replace most of the files in here. And we're going to be dragging and dropping and putting them inside our current RetroArch folder. So I'm going to be coming to the newly downloaded folder I have right here. I'm going to be clicking control A and I'm going to be selecting everything. But before I actually drag everything over, I'm going to be canceling a couple of the things here so we don't replace some of the existing folders in our RetroArch. So for example, I don't want to override my save folder. I don't want to override the system folder where I currently keep all of my BIOS files. I also don't want to override the save states folder. And outside of this, you should be okay to update everything else here. If you'd like to make a backup of anything else before you actually drag and replace everything, feel free to do that now. What I'm going to be doing is dragging and dropping and simply replacing everything over in this folder. Before you do this, I would recommend that RetroArch is currently closed just to avoid any issues. We're going to be dragging it over. We're going to be replacing all of the assets in this folder. And just like that, we're going to be updating RetroArch. Now, again, this update and transfer process can take a couple of seconds. So you might just have to be patient here while this updates. We simply need to click replace files in this destination and we're simply going to be replacing everything in our current RetroArch install to the latest version. So now the next time we launch RetroArch, it should be on the latest version. So from this point, everything is transferred over. Now, if we come to our RetroArch executable here in this folder, if we double click to open it up, it should be on the latest version. And as you can see, we're currently on 1.9.10 instead of 1.9.0. So we have easily updated RetroArch to the latest version without removing any of our old files. As you can see, I still have my Game Boy playlist right here. And just like that, you can easily update RetroArch on your PC. Once we're on our main menu, we're going to be looking for the option here called Online Updater. We're going to be clicking this open and here we'll have a couple of options for our online updater. Now, thankfully, RetroArch has added this nice option here called Update Installed Cores, which will update all of your installed cores to the latest version at once. So you won't have to manually update your cores. So we can simply left click this and on the bottom left, we will see our current status. It's going to slowly go through our cores one by one and update them to the latest version. Now, this can take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on how many cores you currently have installed. So you might just have to be a little bit patient here while this is updating. However, it is a really nice feature and it will save you a lot of time compared to manually updating your cores. I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members who help supporting the channel. Sean Daly, thank you so much. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos and some other perks, be sure to click the join button underneath any video on the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. 
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in the video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.